We are in day two. So if you go to day two of quarter three, you will see unit three, all that glitters. Um, notice that the start of this lesson plan, activity plan is different than typical. This is the first day of a unit. So us teachers need to put more information on this day. You are not required to read through any of this unless you just happen to. Um, you just need to scroll down to the bottom um, and where you will see the classroom activity. So we are going to start, actually today is all, not just start, start and finish today with the unit three introduction. So um, I'm gonna show you this unit three tab once again. I think I briefly showed it to you guys last class, uh, but I'll show you it again. And then we're gonna take notes using this PowerPoint. We are not gonna finish this today. We're just starting the notes today. Um, you don't need to download this unless for some reason you get kicked off of Zoom and you need to catch up, uh, but you won't need um, to download this at all if not. It's just there, just in case. Um, for the notes that you will be taking, I want you guys to start taking more organized notes um, that are easy for you to understand, but also easy for me to understand if I'm looking at your notes to ensure that you're actually getting everything. So I have created this Google Doc. If you click on this Google Doc, it is a view only Google Doc, okay? Um, I'll click on it. Mine will look different than yours because this is actually like my document, so I can edit things on this, but you shouldn't be able to. Um, you might be able to click into the document, but you can't actually edit things. Um, so as you can see on this, I have my header up here with my name, my teacher's name, my class period and class name and the date, um, and then title for the notes, and then I've got it outlined, okay? This is what proper notes should look like. It's organized, um, it's broken down by slides or big uh, topics that are being talked about. This is what your notes moving forward should look like if I ever ask you to take notes. Um, so what you're gonna do with this document, you are actually going to save a copy of this to your own Google Docs, okay? Or to whatever word processor you like to use. Um, so that way you can then just type in to this document and not have to worry about setting this up on your own, okay? So what I want you guys to do before I go in and show you the unit three tab and start taking notes with you, I want you to save a copy of this to your own documents. So if you're gonna save it to Google Docs, all you'll have to do is go file and then make a copy or save a copy. Um, so that works. And then if you are going to do it off of an iPad, it's a little different. I believe you guys have the three dots in the upper right hand corner. And there should be something like uh, send a copy, save a copy, make a copy, something along those phrasings um, where you should be able to save it to Google Docs as well, okay? So it's up to you how you go about saving this, but I'm gonna give you about a minute to do that. When you're done making a copy of it, you can actually type into this document please send me a chat saying done. So that way I know you got it and there's no issues. Perfect, I see some people are already sending chats. Wonderful, thank you guys. So again, I do expect a chat from everyone. Once you have it done, let me know if you're having issues doing it as well. I can try to troubleshoot that with you. <clears throat> Wonderful. So as you guys are doing this, I'll explain. You guys are going to be, like I said previously, taking notes directly on this um, underneath the titles that I've given you and the format I've given you, and you will be submitting this tomorrow in class, okay? So be aware of that. You will be submitting this, um, and I, when you do submit it, I expect it to be in this format, okay? So be aware of that. 
All right, um, I'm gonna explain how this will work for you guys, okay? So as we're taking notes today, um, first thing first, change it so your name is at the top, not my name, okay? Edit your document so it's your name, not mine. Your teacher's name needs to change as well. I am not Mrs. Carter, that is the other English 10 teacher. You want to change that to Miss Condos. And you'll wanna change your period as well because this is not period seven. Um, if you wanna change the date, you can. It is not the sixth anymore, it's the seventh. Um, but that's all you need to change in the header stuff, okay? Which is, I guess, basically every line needs to be changed. So, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, when you guys are going through the notes, I'll tell you when you need to actually edit this outline to add information in. Um, but just so you're aware, the bolded stuff in here um, with next to the numbers is gonna be like titles of slides, okay? Um, or big topics that we're covering. So you can see, there are going to be five main things that you're taking notes on. Underneath each uh, bolded section is a tabbed in uh, section. So you'll have A, B, C, and then those are different points that are gonna be made on the slide. This is a great way to take notes and actually have outlines. So that way you are organizing the information in a manner that actually works well with your brain, okay? Um, you can see there are certain places where it's tabbed in again. So this is like when there's definitions or I'm giving you a question and then you need to answer that question. Um, so that's basically how this will work. We will more than likely get through number three. Um, if we don't, that's okay. You don't have to move ahead. You don't need to do anything for homework. You don't have any homework. It's just doing what we're doing in class and that's it, okay? Now, if you fall behind in class, you aren't able to answer one of the questions, you're not able to get a definition, or you missed one of these up here, then you are gonna have to go back into that PowerPoint I linked in Moodle um, and fill in what you didn't get. But you are not required to do more than what we did in class. We are finishing it tomorrow, okay? So I'm going to pull up the actual PowerPoint that we're working with, and we're gonna start. The first couple of slides you are not taking notes on, so don't even worry about it, okay? Um, you can just listen during this time, okay? Give me a thumbs up if you are ready to go. You have your document set up, you feel good, you know how to type into it, all that stuff. All right, wonderful. Thank you guys for responding with your thumbs, appreciate it. Okay, perfect. So this unit is called All That Glitters. Um, and we are gonna jump right into it, okay? So objectives for this unit. We have some skills that we're gonna be continuing. There are about four of them, and then we have about four new skills that we're going to be gaining over the course of this unit. So previous semester, we talked about characterization, we identified indirect and direct, and we started analyzing that. We're gonna continue doing that. We started talking about themes. Um, we're gonna continue talking about them, analyzing how they're created, what they mean. Um, we started talking about main arguments of articles and the evidence that actually is used to support that. So we'll keep doing that, keep identifying those things. And we're gonna keep working on connecting texts and how they all relate to each other, okay? But for new skills, and we actually started analyzing character development, but this semester, specifically during this unit, we're gonna be talking about the literary terms of character development. Okay, which is new. You have the static um, and dynamic characters, you have round and flat characters, what those terms mean, and then analyzing the characters using characterization to see is a character static, dynamic, flat, or round, okay? And how do we know that based off of evidence used, okay? So that's one thing we'll be adding. We are also gonna be adding um, the definitions of connotation and denotation and then analyzing an author's use of connotation and denotation. So we'll get into that later in the unit. I'm not giving you those definitions right now. The third is evaluating an author's argument. So previously we identified that argument. Now we're gonna actually evaluate it. Is it logical? Did they use good evidence? Do they need more evidence? Did they explain themselves well? Did they actually get across the point that they were supposed to? So now you're actually kind of moving into like critiquing that stuff. And then the last is we're gonna start looking at some visual texts as well. So pictures, videos, and analyzing those things, okay? So these are our new skills. They'll be kind of spreckled throughout the unit um, depending on what type of text we're working with, okay? 
Now, the texts that we're actually going to be reading. You have nonfiction text and fiction text. The nonfiction are going to be two articles. One is called Ads May Spur Unhappy Kids to Embrace Materialism. And the second is My Possessions Myself. So those are going to be the articles. We're going to get to the articles at the end of the unit. The beginning of the unit will focus on these three fictional texts. The first is called Avarice. It is a poem by Yusuf Kamunyaka. The second is a short story called The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. And then the third is a song by Macklemore. They called Wings. Okay, so these are the texts we're going to be working with. We'll get to them one by one. The first one we'll be working with is the poem, Avarice, and then we'll move in to the necklace, then it will be wings, okay, and then the articles. All right, this is where you start taking notes. You pull up your Google Doc, okay? The first number on there, the first bolded title, is going to say like big questions or big ideas, something like that, okay? And then it has underneath it, question one, question two, question three. Here on this slide, these are our three questions that we're gonna be focusing on over the course of this unit. Our goal here is to answer these eventually, or at least come to a new or deeper understanding of these questions, okay? Your job on your notes is to actually type up these questions. So where it says question one, you're gonna say, what drives our passion for material things? Question two, you'll write out that one. Question three, you'll write out that one. If you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Ms. Condos, show me. If you go in to this actual Google Doc that you created, you'll see question one. You're going to delete that word question one, and you're actually going to type into it. Okay, and type that first question. Same thing for two and same thing for three. Okay, so while you guys are typing, and I'll give you an extra minute after I finish talking, I'm going to... Um, to, to read these and kind of discuss them a little bit, okay? So our first question, what drives our passion or want or desires for material things? So what are some of the things in our lives, in our world, um, in our country, in other countries, whatever, what are things that drive us to actually want all these material things or want new things or better things or the next best thing? Um, what drives that? What are the factors that make us actually feel that need? And then number two, what do our possessions actually reveal about us as individuals, okay? Or as an overarching society? So we're gonna take a look at even our own lives and think, okay, I have this iPhone. Okay, great. I like my iPhone, but there's a new iPhone out, right? So now I want this new one and that's fine. That's gonna be kind of towards that first question. What drives that? And then it's gonna think, well, what does my need for this iPhone show about me, okay? What does my, my possessions actually show about my values, my beliefs, um, my wants, my concerns, my needs? What does it reveal, okay? And then bring that broader to the actual country itself, our nation. What does it reveal about our nation that we all need these things. And then the third question is kind of philosophical, deep question. Can these material items that we want and possess, can they bring us true happiness? Okay, so for that question, we really have to think, well, what is true happiness to us? What does that mean? What does that look like? And then can the material items that we actually have, can that achieve that definition? Okay, so those are gonna be the three main questions. You are not to answer these questions now because you don't really know. We're gonna base these answers off of the text that we're reading and the discussions that we're having, okay? So do not answer these right now. All right, I am going to give you about one minute to finish typing stuff up, okay? Um, and then we're gonna move into the next slide, okay?
All right, we are going to move on to the next slide. Okay. So, defining some key terms. These three words are going to be necessary uh, for discussing and understanding the text that we're going to be reading. Okay. Um, along with just understanding the key topics that we're talking about, which is materialism and greed. So, first word is materialism. You could also look up materialistic. Second is luxury. And third is necessity. You are going to Google or dictionary.com, or if you have a physical dictionary, you'd like to use that, look up the words. Okay. Then on your Google Doc or on your note page, you are going to actually type up that definition. Okay. Very simple. You have three words and you need to define all three. I will be calling on one person for each word and they will share their definition for that. So be prepared to be called on. Okay. Um, go ahead and start right now. I'm going to give you about three minutes. Okay. Starting uh, four minutes since you have to look some stuff up. Four minutes. Starting now. You guys have about 25 seconds.
All right, let's go over these words. I'm gonna call on one person per word, okay? So let's start with materialism. Oops, I already gave it. Okay, materialism or materialistic. Um, let's hear from, uh, let's see, Connor. Connor, can you give us the definition for materialism slash materialistic? Uh, I got a tendency to consider material possessions and physical comfort as more important than spiritual values. Very good. Yes, that is the exact same definition that I have on here for materialism. You could have also said for materialistic, excessively concerned with material possessions or money oriented. Either of those definitions are fine. They will both help you with reading the text over the course of this unit, okay? Um, and we're going to see specifically in the short story that we're reading, or we're going to be reading shortly, um, materialism is huge in that. And it's going to be one of the topics that our theme is going to revolve around, okay? So first, understanding what that word means is very beneficial because that'll actually help you explain or analyze the text. Now, the next word is luxury. Let's hear from uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, tell us the definition of luxury. My definition of luxury is the state of great comfort and exaggerated extravagant living. Okay, very good. So you have... Um, something that is adding to your pleasure, to your comfort. It's making you live a nice life, an excess life, um, but it's not actually necessary for you to live. Um, it's a living condition of abundance, basically. So if you add something like my definition or like Jeremy's definition, you are good for that, okay? And the last word is necessity. So let's hear from uh, Giselle. Giselle, what is your definition for necessity? Um, I said it's the fact of being required or indispensable. Okay, so basically meaning it's an item or thing um, that is indispensable or you cannot do a task, you cannot live without that thing, okay? Um, it's an urgent need or desire, in other words. So if you have anything along those lines, you have a perfect definition for necessity. Um, and those two words, luxury and necessity, will come into play when we're talking about the short stories, the poem, uh, the song, the articles. It's gonna come into play no matter what. So these are great words to have moving into this unit just so you can use them, um, not only in your own writing, but in the discussion too that we're gonna be having. So the next slide is going to be some discussion questions or reflection questions, okay? So what you're going to do on your notes document, you are going to respond to these first two questions. I'm going to share that document with you so we can look at it real quick together. Um, number three is reflection questions. This slide that we're about to see has A and B on it, okay? As you can see, the questions are listed for you right here. The next slide will have the following two. Don't worry about doing these two right now because we might not even get to them. So just worry about doing the first two right now. It does tell you how many sentences I am expecting. You'll just delete the word answer and then actually type your answer into it. Don't worry about your answer being super philosophical or super well-written, best vocabulary. Just answer the question, okay? Very simple. Um, so the first question is, what is the difference between a want and a need, okay? That could be you actually defining those words or just comparing or contrasting those words. It's up to you how you go about it. Number two is, is it wrong to want more than what you have or more than you can afford? And to explain that. So why might it be wrong? Why might it not be wrong? What are the benefits or the consequences of possibly wanting more than what you have or more than you can afford? For this question, you could give examples if you'd like, if that helps you explain your thoughts. Um, there's definitely examples of both it being wrong and it being okay. So you can go either way with that but I will be calling on some people for each of these questions. So be prepared to be called on, okay? I'm gonna give you about four minutes. So I'll set a timer for four minutes, starting right now. A need is something that you can't necessarily live without. Exactly, so very similar to probably what a lot of you guys put in there. A want is something that you would like to have, but it's not necessary um, to either completing a task or just living. Um, while a need is something that is necessary, you have to have it, it is required. 
Um, now, Maddie, I'm going to ask you the same question or ask you another question to build off of this real quick. So when we talk about what we want and what we need in our day-to-day -day lives, and you could think about yourself for this or think about friends, family, what you see in movies, TV shows, or whatever, do you think that we always use these words properly when we talk about material items and what we need and what we want? Or do you think that we tend to confuse these words? I think we tend to confuse them and we say like we need certain things even though we just want them or mm -hmm. oh, we just want something but in reality we need it and I think we can use them depending on like where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah and especially like in our country specifically like we are much more privileged than most countries and when we say we need something it's like oh, hold on hold on no you probably just want that a lot and it's getting kind of confusing for you to understand that so over the course of this unit i really do pose the challenge to you to when you're saying that you want something or need something really think are you using the proper word like do you actually need that or do you just want it um, and then sometimes that helps us reevaluate, like, okay, maybe I don't have to spend this money right now, or maybe I don't have to push as hard for this right now. Maybe I should be valuing something else. Kind of think about it as you're, you're speaking in your day-to-day -day life, or you're talking to your parents, or you're talking to your friends, or even talking to yourself about stuff. Um, question that, like, are you using the proper word for that? Now, number two, is it wrong to want more than what you have or more than you can afford? And to explain your thoughts. Um, so let's hear from Randy. Randy, what is your answer to number two? I, I, I said that uh, it isn't wrong to want more than what you want or you can afford as long as you don't, don't start jeopardizing your needs. No. So like, wanted like a Ferrari. Like, okay. it's fine as long as you don't like go into debt for it and start like, losing your home and things that right. you like. Right, and that's honestly like how you guys know or have at least heard about the Great Depression, right? Like that's kind of how that started when people had the ability to use credit cards, they could actually finally get everything they wanted. Um, but then not realizing that you're actually hurting other aspects of your life, you might be going into debt, you could get something taken away from you because of that debt, um, that there's consequences sometimes to wanting more and actually going after that want. Um, all right, let's hear from uh, Savannah. Savannah, what is your answer to number two? Um, I said, I said it isn't wrong because everyone wishes that they had more than what they have, but some people should be thankful and grateful that they have, that they are more fortunate than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's human nature to want more, right? Like that's how progress happens. Um, that's how people achieve their goals is by wanting more um, and setting that as a goal for themselves. But it's also important, like Savannah said, um, to appreciate and understand that what you already have is sometimes better than what other people have. And like, at least you have blank, right? Um, so remembering that your spot might not be all that bad, but it's totally okay to want more and to, to achieve more. So just realize that you should also be appreciative within that, okay? So that's going to lead us into, um, well, technically, you guys don't even have time. We have one minute left of class. So I'm going to stop sharing this. Um, 